Okay, okay, okay. Here we are. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Uh, I'm going to have to turn this camera around real quick and show you the amazing, amazing view that has been building day by day as the snow falls, as the winter gets into full swing. But uh, this morning, let's just take a quick peek, shall we? Let's just take a quick peek. Dun, dun. Oh, yeah. It's gorgeous. Now, mind you, that's like construction out there. So it's not the most pleasant to be around and yet the beauty the snow the crystalline beauty of snow falling landing bringing its light to us is such a gift and really a true gift of the winter and being up north oh <sighs> i didn't miss winter when i was away just for one year back in uh, the winter of 2012 when i was in peru but i gotta say and I talk about this with Katya all the time, and she really reminds me um, just how special these kind of winters are. So I'm giving thanks for that. I'm filling my heart with the joy of creation through the winter manifest outside. And I want to talk about a few things this morning. I'm very excited to share what's been going on, some insights, some resources that might be really helpful for you in your journey right now i know a lot of us are going through a lot of things major pivots major transitions major pressure although more and more of the folks that i connect with are feeling relief from excuse me from some of that pressure right the insanity of the narrative is being seen for what it is and it's just falling away it's falling down it's it's being discarded. It's being ignored, right? Humans are coming together to be real with each other, to connect in truth with each other, and to connect to something far greater than a human being. Um, not to diminish the divine nature and uh, miraculousness of each and every human, but of course we are created in the image of a creator who is far beyond this current conception or realization or knowing of what it means to be alive and to you know be conscious and so forth. So I want to talk about just a few things right off the bat here. Now you probably know that for most of November, myself and Katya were down and out with what we suspect was the vid, the Rona, um, for a number of reasons i'm going to get antibody testing at some point so i can prove that i've got my natural immunity which i really wanted the whole time you know when this whole thing began i think a lot of us you know especially those of us that grew up in the chicken pox era um although i was actually inoculated against chicken pox and i have not experienced chicken pox i don't know if that if that inoculation did my system any harm i don't know what kind of heavy metals things were in there but I know it was common when, I guess just a little bit before my age, but also around my age, that when someone had chicken pox, you had a chicken pox party, all the kids got it at the same time, and thus natural immunity was shared by the community. Um, so I am looking to have that for this go around and encouraging as many people as possible to have that for this go around. Uh, interesting, these new variants seem to be uh, very ineffective against people with natural immunity or people who have not been inoculated. Um, so no reason to fear. Regardless, there's no reason to fear. Fear never serves, right? Preservation of life based on survival and based on instincts, you know, jump out of the way of the car is useful, right? Avoiding danger is useful, but fear and worry is never useful. And that is the truth, and I believe that to always be true, even when we forget about it. Um, something that's been really informing my thoughts, my perspective, my, my language even, and the way that I'm showing up, the way that I, in the words of the guides, I'm talking about Paul Selig and his books on uh, 
the Beyond the Known series recommended to me by my good friend and soul brother, Angelito Marcos. And just tapping into the next one in the series, which is called The Kingdom. The Kingdom, and the Kingdom is here and is coming, my friends. The Kingdom is coming. It comes to us and through us, and it, it is renowned as the perfection of the divine here and now, right? In this higher perspective, they use the terms of octaves, you know, in the higher octave, because everything comes down to vibration and oscillation. And so when we take what seems like a really dense, a really terrible, you know, awful, the worst thing ever, and we elevate it through a higher perspective to a higher accord, as they would say, to a higher resonance, then we can really see the perfection in it. And for myself, I mean, the examples are endless. Uh, but the most recent, you know, going through COVID and me and Katya did an entire podcast that I'll be releasing today um, that uh, really talks about the lessons learned and the gift and the perfection that unfolded for us and uh, the lessons that were not necessarily fun to learn or easy to learn, including me poisoning her, thinking that I was giving her nutritional support for uh, immunity and uh, antivirals. She's fine now. She's recovering. She's, you know, she's very strong in her constitution and in her body. And so she's regenerating and bouncing back just like I am, just like I am and have. Um, but then I was doing that. I was actually giving her something which was good for me and which was good for maybe certain people at certain times, but which was not good for her in her specific state. And thus the lesson of personalization was realized once again, right? Because if I go around and give cookie cutter solutions to people without knowing what's going on at a deeper level and without knowing what their body actually is ready for and desiring in its own way, because it has its own consciousness, its own awareness, then the doors opened for mistakes to happen or for guesses to miss the mark and to cause issues, right? And this is the, the, the paradigm we want to move away from. We want to move away from spray and pray, guess, you know, and correct to a more partnered, a more cooperative, a more co-creative journey of tuning into what does your body, what does your mind, what does your being need what is it calling for right in this moment and that's likely not going to be the exact thing that somebody else's body is calling for even if they seem to be suffering from the same thing so stay tuned because that podcast is quite fascinating and quite uh yeah it should be a really enjoyable educational uh mind expanding adventure so i'll be posting that here later so stay tuned for that and if somehow it doesn't show up, then uh, perhaps send me a message or comment on this because something's gone wrong. Something's gone terribly wrong. Um, the other pieces that I want to bring up. Number one is chi. Are you tending to your chi? Chi is described as life force. It is an electrical signal that runs through our bodies. It is what the acupuncture meridian system understands and shares and works on. It's electrical, right? It's an electrical system. It's why when you rub your hands or you rub your fingernails or you clap your hands or you do something, you, you pound on your body in some way, even doing breath work, you feel the electricity. You feel the vibration. It's like the force in Star Wars. This shit is real. We are Jedis in training. We are masters and magicians in training. And the earth is our training grounds, is our play field. And so chi is very real. Um, although, you know, some medical, Western medical scientific materialists may try and uh, dismiss that fact. But I mean, it's self-evident. It's obvious and it's been studied for thousands of years. Now, Qigong, which is a practice of cultivating your chi, moving your chi around your body, it is a very simple and easy, in most cases, uh, at least the basic stuff, practice that is so effective and so to the point. And uh, it changed my life for the first time back in like 20, probably 2013 or so, 2012, 2013, Hai Kuang Sunim, uh, a.k.a. Robert. Uh, the man based in Brampton who does Qigong online now and probably in person someplace. Um, but he always focused on bad stress out kind of chi. So relaxation, 
not the intense martial arts forms, but the relaxation form. Get the stress out of your body, relax your body, soften your body, because chi flows in a soft body. Who'd have thought? You know, I grew up on P90X infomercials and idolizing, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger and all these bodybuilders and action heroes who have these big, massive, you know, big, massive, strong, hard bodies. And uh, if you're not careful in the pursuit of bodybuilding, you will put so much tension into your system that your chi will get bunged up. Your chi will not be flowing. This is why Shaolin monks and, uh, you know, different martial artists, they're very lean. They're very, like, sinewy, you know, like a Bruce Lee, which is more of my body type anyways. Um, they're very lean. They're very agile and they have this strength and resilience and capacity that people far bigger than them do not have because it's not about the bulk muscle it's about the energy system that is animating this vessel right of course you want to tone and train your muscles and condition your body condition your bones those things are all good and well but if you're only doing that then you're missing the point. And so this is an invitation. I'm going to drop a comment down below here of a, a practice that I came across on YouTube, which is so easy to follow, which is so plain and simple, and which will get things moving, flowing in your life. You can even start doing it right now as you watch this or listen to this. And on the first piece is just to bounce, right? It's literally bending your knees and just having emotion coming from your knees and bouncing. That's it. And you just do that, right? You could do that for five minutes and your system would thank you immensely for the gift that you've given it. And you'll feel the difference. That's what I want to get across here. You're going to feel the difference. This is not about some airy-fairy, you know, ethereal thing that makes no sense and you hear hippies talk about. No, this is like hard, uh, traditional science, you know, proven, studied, worked on. You know, this is what's been behind the systems of medicine that have kept people well and, uh, you know, cultures well. I'm talking about the Chinese in this case. Uh, but that have, you know, they, they haven't needed the treatments for chronic disease that we currently need because they cultivated a strength and a resilience and a flow in their most vital energy, their chi, their life force, and that kept them doing well. All right. And the same is true for you. And not only this, right, because the body is one thing and taking care of the body, energizing the body is definitely important. But the calming effect on the mind is probably more important, particularly these days where there's information overload. I don't know about you, but I have so many sources that I can go to for the latest news, the latest developments, the latest this and that and podcast and oh my Lord, you know, it's too much. It is too much, which is also why I've loved tuning into the uh, the Paul Selig books, because it's one thing that when I've got a moment or if I'm cooking or if I'm driving, I can put that on and continue a, a continuity of thought and of reception and of transmission and of learning that is not, you know, YouTube with ads and that is not, you know, some new podcast with a new topic. Because that stuff is just like ping-ponging. And I've done this to myself, y'all. I've done this. is ping-ponging your brain and your consciousness around. And you just feel, you know, discombobulated. You just feel frazzled. And you may retain some nuggets. You may retain some wisdom, some knowledge, insights, whatever it is. Excuse me. But it's very hard to keep a consistent track when your consciousness is bouncing all over the place. This is why... You know, you often hear teachers, and this could be in a martial art, this could be in a sport, this could be in a philosophy, whatever it is, uh, spirituality, spiritual paths, where they say, you know, the path that is right, the path that is going to work is the one that you commit to, right? So it's like, don't do every kind of yoga, you know, a different kind of yoga every day of the week and expect to go deep in any particular one of them. Right? Or expect to receive the full benefit of any particular one of them. Right? You want to go deep within something, get the essence of it, get some level of awareness or mastery even around it, and then take that onto the next thing. Right? Integrate that with the next thing. Whether it's a movement practice, whether you're taking your yoga and now you're going to do animal flow, right? Or then you're going to do weightlifting, or then you're going to do gymnastic training. 
you want to have a foundation, a solid foundation in these things before you just jump around between them and, uh, you know, stay on the surface and stay on the shallow and never get to the benefit which lies down below. Now, this is also true on the spiritual sense. This is something that I want to be talking, I will be talking more and more about because it lights me up and because it is really a massive part of my mission here on this earth is to share um, from a more spiritual place, from a more timeless place, from a more ultimate place, pointing us towards a more ultimate place. Uh, that is beyond, you know, these bodies and this mind and my preferences and my ego and the things that I want to see happen and my accomplishments and my failures and all the me, 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 selfish, really nonsense to a certain degree. I mean, we, we want to be, um, we want to thank ourselves for our journeys, thank our small self for doing what it does to get us through the day, to keep us safe at times. Um, and of course, we're learning from the entire thing. It's informing our experience as we mature and ascend to a higher level of realization and knowing of ourselves and knowing of truth through our experience and through ourselves. And uh, this to me, and I mean, for a little bit of background, I was raised in the church. I was raised at a Baptist church growing up. Uh, not like the ones you see on TV necessarily, but there was a lot of singing and praying and some very soulful moments, at least soulful individuals, right? Typically, those uh, brothers and sisters of a darker complexion are the most soulful in the congregation. And uh, I really appreciate that. I really admire that. And I really love, actually, to see people losing their shit in ecstasy and in uh, prayer and in rejoicing because that I think is what we are called to do if it is true that that wants to move through our bodies then you know being all reserved like us white folks tend to be in the pew you know singing monotone um, that stuff needs to go because that stuff is dead right you are you're, you're dead if you're in that place you need to feel it you need to know the emotionality the tonality the intensity of that energy moving through your body right in a biodynamic kind of sense that is how you know you're alive and that's how you know the holy spirit if you want to call it that moves through you right and so this idea of christ the figure of christ the example of perfect love perfect understanding uh, giving up our own selfish needs and desires to serve something greater which i believe is what we were called to do have been called to do and then of course uh, the church and the religious institutions have corrupted and manipulated and used these things and these figures for control, um, mostly because the Roman Empire, which was based on pagan influences, which are not, you know, good or bad necessarily. You know, you can work with the elements, you can work with these things. But I think there's a higher truth we're being called to, right? Instead of like manipulating stuff in a magician kind of witchy way, which again, I, have, I got friends that are into this. I was very interested in this stuff for a long time. But instead of doing that, I think we are called to simply know ourselves as creators and detach from our own selfish desires and show up in service, right? So it's not about let me manipulate this thing or cast this spell or do this ritual to create this outcome, uh, because that's all from a lower place. That's all from a self-serving more ego identified place typically um, but so the call the call of Christ the call of these books and and the the spirit of Christ is I think is what's speaking through the guides right it is that Christ consciousness it is that perfect awareness that perfect love and knowingness that is here to teach and instruct and shepherd us as students to reunite with it right that's the whole point and so um, not only these books, but then physically going to a church and praying together and giving thanks for the beauty of the world that is around us, you know, giving thanks for the opportunities to learn and grow, giving thanks for the sickness, which informs and upgrades my body, upgrades my immune system, reminds me of how amazing it is that I have a body that works, that I have hands that work, that I can cook food, that I can go for a walk, that I can taste food, 
right? That I can have the energy to work out, that I can have the energy to want to build something, to want to contribute, to want to serve somebody else. When you're sick, you can't do those things, right? And so the gift of sickness comes into the body, comes into our experience. Not only does it up level our virome or our microbiome and inform us of new threats and new things so we can create harmony once again, but it shows us just how amazing and how miraculous each day and each opportunity is to show up and to serve and to contribute to the goodness and to the expansion and to the vitality of another. And that for me, friends, is and continues to be the most fulfilling thing, right? The most, when I'm, the small me is out of the way, and there's a sense of flow and connectedness, heart to heart, you know, soul to soul connectedness and truth being presented, being revealed and insight and energy and awareness and motivation welling up from within me. Sometimes to overwhelm me, right, to overwhelm me with emotions and tears and, and at the beauty of it all, at the perfection of it all. And for a long time, I wouldn't allow myself to feel that, right? But I've learned, I've learned that I need to feel that if I want to be alive, right? And so however this is landing in your world, in your life, in your heart, in your mind at this time, I hope it is supporting you. I hope it is reminding you of the child of God, of the creator self that you are, of the ocean in a drop, as they say, as the manifestation of perfection through you through your body through your mind through your heart through your soul i hope that's reminding you of that and that you can claim this in your experience here and now and i would like to offer a few of the words from again these are the books the uh the paul selling books um there's many of them but i'm talking more about alchemy uh, realization alchemy in the kingdom these are the Beyond the Known series. I highly recommend the audible version of these books because it is profound and is very simple. And so if you want to repeat these words, you are free and encouraged to do so. And that is, I know who I am in truth. These are claims. These are incantations. These are statements of claiming and statements of exerting or owning rather your creator authority and so we say i know who i am in truth who i am the capital i am in truth i know what i am in truth i know how i serve in truth i have come i have come i have come I am free. I am free. I am free. And let that resonate in your cells, in your being. Perhaps go for a walk outside, perhaps hug a tree, perhaps do something to stay connected. Cherish that feeling of connection. Connection is why we're here. Connection is why we're here. And it is always waiting for us. It is always reaching out to form a bridge to us, no matter where we are. We could be in the deepest pits of despair, or we can be at the highest heights of joy, or anywhere in between. And there is always a divine bridge ready to be created. So, I think that's all I wanted to express today. I believe I feel complete. I hope this has been useful to you. Let me know in the comments or in a direct message if it has been useful to you. And if you are challenged, if you are currently challenged, if connecting to this level of your being is a real hard thing for you, um, or if your health is just you know, giving you challenges, presenting obstacles that are hard to navigate and confusing and that you're not getting the results that you want in your body, in your energy, then please, please, please always know that I am available to reach out via a direct message or a comment and to start the conversation because this is the work I have been called to do, that Katya and I do together, that the world, I believe, is being called to do collectively and individually. 
right? There's no mistake that the world over the past couple of years has become very aware of things like immunity and how to maintain and protect and enhance our immunity and things like the essential nature of touch and community, right? And this mental health, chronic health epidemic, you know, burden that we see in the population. It is not our destiny to stay stuck there and it is not um, our design to stay stuck there. We are designed to thrive and the body is designed to regenerate and to bounce back. So too it is with the mind and the soul, right? These things are resilient. They are not to be damaged or destroyed by things of the earth, you know, material things, temporal things, you know, illusions, delusions. And so again, if I can help you with that, if you want to be a, a revitalized man, if you want to walk the path of revitalization, you know where to find me. Please do reach out, get in touch. And if this uh, live stream touched you in any way, please feel free to share it with someone you care about, someone you think would benefit from such a message. And uh, in the meantime, may you know yourself as the perfection and as the divine being and as the constantly learning and evolving and improving human and man that you are and uh have yourself a great day thank you for being here i love you i appreciate you i send you all the goodness all of the support that you remember who you are and that you take that step and walk this journey with brothers and sisters by your side but primarily if you're a man with brothers because you need your brothers you gotta have your brotherhood that is a fact at least in my life that is a fact and uh, there's something that can't be replaced you cannot substitute brotherhood for something else if you are a man if you are walking towards a higher version a more noble and righteous version an embodied and vital strong version of yourself so that's what we do that's why i'm here thank you thank you thank you much love be well and uh yeah share this message to those you think need it and together we shall rise much love y'all